but this is now my Mama G cam. This is <laughs> Mum's new series, guys, of moments with Mama G. We was going to do a theme. Oh, Mum, your uh, sleeves are rolled up on your arm. <laughs> we said what was the theme going to be? It could be either like pyjamas, loungewear. I think Mum's just going to go graphic tees by the look of this. We've got the headband in. And uh, I didn't really tell Mum much about this. She doesn't know the questions. But this is now like your everyone's agony arm. So I've already briefed her, no swear words. We can't swear on the channel. <laughs> but guys, this is going to be Moments with Mama G. No, you... but, but it's my first one. We'll see how we go. <laughs> She'll be okay. She's just being very dramatic. Right. No. Are you ready? I'm, I'm, I'm your mum. I'm not a thingy like that. We will put a disclaimer. Right. She is not a counsellor or therapist. and She is not advised no. to give this advice so please don't take anything she says as gospel no. but it's just a woman with experience and wisdom who is going to hopefully try and brighten people's okay. days we'll have a laugh so the first one oh my god so exciting you are an amazing mama to shannon and not a question but i was wondering when shannon moves out can i move in please <laughs> is it male or female female uh oh uh, i don't know i'm gonna i want my living room back please <laughs> <laughs> you might get the spare box room. Yeah. Happy New Year, ladies, and Dan. Thank you. Love, love, love the channel. Right. So this is from someone who I think I we've spoke about previously. Oh, <laughs> to look oh, in the oh. back room. <laughs> Hi, Mama G. I hope you find this goods. As you know, I lost my daughter, and from the minute she passed, I felt guilty as we were in the same room. This was the lady whose daughter loved end dubs like me oh, when yeah, I went away. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Where was my mother intuition that day? As I feel I let her down and haven't gotten oh. over it. They say mothers have the intuition, so where was mine? Love to you all three. You don't have to say much, but your daughter is with you in your heart. Don't don't try and think you failed her because sometimes as mums we do things and we say things, don't we? And we but I'm sure and look for the feathers in your house. If you yeah. see if you see a feather, because that's what we see from my mum, Nana G Big, we know that she's around. Or if you take a picture and you see your daughter in a li little orbs of your picture, that's your daughter. The little circles. Yeah, the it? circles, yeah. I'm disabled and fine. Finding... I'm spending you my love, that <laughs> previous one. Yeah. Um, she's um said if we ever go over to Ireland. Oh, and go over. Oh. I said, I love love a bit of Ireland. I'll have a Guinness with you. <laughs> I'm disabled and find it hard to make friends. Any advice? Uh, what, is she in a wheelchair or something, the lady? Or just... I'm not entirely oh. sure of the disability. But... Right. Just be yourself. Yeah. When you're out, don't worry, because I have disabilities, but hey, -ho, I'm still me. Not all disabilities are visible. No, That's the no, thing as well to no. remember with people. Uh, oh, one says, uh, she's a great auntie and lover to bits. I wish I still had my mum. They're always with you. Yeah, yeah. Right. I talk to my mum every day because she's <laughs> above my headboard. <laughs> the poem. <laughs> yeah. Hi, beautiful. Have you got any tips for becoming a first-time mum? I'm due in March. Oh, lovely, lovely. Not yes. long. Yes, just uh, enjoy. I don't know how long you've waited, but just enjoy. The time will go quick. You will have the child and, you know, go to school, nursery, blah, 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 and just enjoy, enjoy. And when it cries, if you've waited a long time, get out and cuddle it, <laughs> which I, was I did. say, do you have any advice for nappies or crying? But... Uh, well, if it cries, get out and cuddle. But don't they tell you not to do that? Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, you know, Mama with, with us, cuddle. yeah, with us, get out and cuddle, yeah. What do you do when you're feeling low or what puts a smile on your face? Uh, I just think of how lucky I am to have people around me that make me laugh and happy and smile. That's good. Because it's not, it's not for you as if you have material things. I say to Shane, so long as you have a good heart, health and happiness, and you have a good heart and you can help people. But if you help people and they don't, you know, reciprocate or they're horrible to you, you don't help them no more. I you know to that. But we, we I, I, I do must admit, things in my younger day I've done and I've not learnt by experience. So, 
<laughs> and there's me saying she had the wisdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you go. It's, it goes through life, Shannon. You have to have these things, don't you? Right. Someone says, love this new feature. How does Mama G feel about the current government? Remember, no swearing. <laughs> uh, well, I try to watch Martin Lewis viewers every, as you know, I paid and I have my pension. But I just think the government needs to, uh, Jeremy Hunt, yes, in case you look at this, <laughs> the lady's pension age needs to go to 64. <laughs> and I will definitely vote for you because I haven't voted in years, viewers. I just think it's just a no-go thing, you know. I can't ever remember voting. No, no. So, uh, Jeremy Hunt, if you're watching this. Yeah, yeah. But he's uh, done I've... good. He put the National Assurance down to 10% for people now. Oh, so are you going to give me your 450 or 900 <laughs> pound a year for me then? That's good, viewers. You've heard it for you. Straight from the horse's mouth. Shannon's giving Mama G the 900 pound. I don't think it's that much, is it? It's well, it all, de it all depends on your salary. If you earn more... God, I'm not on a salary to get a No, program, right? you're going to... Oh, I oh, keeps looking in this this thing. She looks in the little flat yeah, lens. yeah. But uh, yes, yes. So, and I love Martin Lewis. Let's have a look. First of all, in capital letters, yay, Mama G's own video. Much love. Secondly, how do you feel about opposites attract situation? My boyfriend has so much potential but no drive, and I'm a fairly driven person, and it's really frustrating. I want to hit him over the head with the brick half the time. Well, that's how you're going to get on. Opposites attract, isn't it? I mean, it. I'll say that, eh? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm sort of a uh, not loud, but I'm I'm sort of straight to the point. When I met Shannon's dad, he was very quiet and timid, but we stayed together for years and years and years. And opposite attract. Obviously, you and your partner, there's something there for you to stay. So stay with it, but don't be horrible to him and force him to do things. No, but do you be... have maybe any tips to maybe give him a drive? J just I believe think... in yourself. Yeah, I think... Yeah, just believe in there. yourself. Because if the lady of the relationship believes in him, he's got to have confidence in the lady to pursue it to him, that yeah. you're worth you're worth that, isn't it? Indeed, indeed. Oh, so this isn't from... This isn't a question. This is actually one of my cousins. You may know from the wording... No questions. She's always been such a good egg and you're very lucky to have her heart of gold. That is our cousin. You see? All right, yeah, beans? yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Would Mama G like to get married again? No. She's never been married. I've never been married, no. <laughs> well, when we had Shan, I, I wanted the marriage, but uh, it was sort of, took a little bit out of context <laughs> and other people was involved. So Shan's dad just said, right, we'll... Uh, We'll see how we go. But Shannon has her father's name and she has little traits of her dad, so everybody's happy at the minute. Well, I can't say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a volatile No, no, sure, sure, minute, no, no. I want to find a new hobby or something to do to keep my mind off of things. What do you suggest? Uh, laying on your bed and eating a pot of Pringles. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no, I'm only joking, viewers. Uh... Well, I've started walking to the local shop now to try and keep fit as I have a few spare tyres and uh, we will see. I've been three times in two weeks. <laughs> so uh, I, No, and I carried a big bag of shopping today and Shannon kept waiting for me. So I carried baby, two yeah. before anyone thinks that Mum's yeah, carrying the I, shopping. I carried a big one, <laughs> but I'm going to do it more in two weeks and then I'm going to uh, go a little bit further the next month, but... It's just trying to stop the snacking. I am trying, but reading and colouring. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. And I've I've got a a thing that Shannon bought me a year ago. It's a picture with some pens. I can do that. But I've read in the paper today, viewers, crocheting. So oh. if any of you people know, it's a hook with a bit of a you you do the wool and you keep doing this or something. So if oh, you can do knitting. it online to show me, no, they reckon it's easier than knitting. Okay. You just keep going and you can make things. So I'm up your right Maybe we'll have yours. a crochet series with Mum. <laughs> well, I can get rid of Blanky. Oh I'll, yeah, I'll do you a new one. Yeah, I'll do you a new one. Right, guys, I'm just going to quickly change the battery and we'll be right back. All right. All right, she's back. We've changed the batteries. We are back. 
How Some viewers are... probably thought I was having a nifty. <laughs> How are you coping knowing Shan could be moving out soon? Uh, not very good. <laughs> we have a good chat and we have the crack, but I think maybe on the day, uh, it's not going to be very good. But we've all been there, done it, and it. I don't think it's going to be a day, Mum. I feel it's going to take me months to move. Yeah, out. all right, then we'll graduate. But uh, <laughs> Shannon might just decide that, Mum, I'm going to stay till I'm 35. So, woo! Oh, no, she's not from the look on her face. <laughs> How do I learn to love my body? Uh, just, just be yourself. God makes us in different ways, tall, slim, fat, thin, you know. So long as you are happy in your body and contented. I mean, viewers, you've seen my body. I'm 64 nearly. <laughs> I see some other women my age, right? And I think, I wish I was like that. Tall, slim, very modern clothes. And then I just think, well, maybe you don't, uh, your lifestyle isn't like mine. Because I just do what I want to do. Hi. Adore you both. What were you like at Shannon's age? What was you like at 28? Oh, let me think, let me think. That was a long time ago. Uh, 28. I was just going into the construction business two years after that when I met her dad. Uh, but before that, I was in a long-term relationship. But after that, I think maybe 26 to 30 or 28, I started uh, having me time and I would do what I wanted when I wanted <laughs> She become a hussy. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> that was that was when I was younger. <laughs> Not a question. Just wanted to say, Mama G's an amazing lady, and you make me laugh so much. That's thank cute. you. I don't right. charge for it. <laughs> my job is in my comfort zone, but I want to get a new role. How do I get out of the comfort zone? Oh, take the plunge. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, if if you want to get out the comfort zone. Life's too short. Get out there and enjoy. How can I get out of the habit of buying new things, especially when I don't need them? It's more of a want. Oh, I don't have that trouble with yours. <laughs> As you can see, my uh, my wardrobe is like, I get things I feel comfortable with. If I see something and it's reasonable, I will get it. But I always come and say to Shan, I've seen this, what do you think? And she's like, Mum. If you like it, go to the bank. You've got my card, get it. And I'm like, mm, it's £20. But to me, viewers, that's a lot of money. But I have managed to get a nice, nice coat from a big store, reduced. But I put it on and I thought something's happened. So I went all the way to the next town, saw all the coats on the rack, and that's the way it's made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was something wrong, that's why it was cheaper, but they're all made, so I'm going to wear it now. <laughs> you will see me in it when we go to London. I think it's probably hard for a shopping thing, because I buy something because I want it, not necessarily because I need it. What, you? And that's your bugbear. You're like, yeah, do you yeah. need it? I'm like, no, but I want yeah, it. Yeah. But I must admit, viewers, with Shannon, she's sort of come down the scale for the cost of things, you know, as she's got older. How do you deal with a controlling ex still hanging around when you're trying in your new relationship? You've got a hanger on her. Uh, just try and put that to the back of your head and move move forward. But if it's uh, if it's too much hanging on, you need to pay a visit to maybe uh, somebody in authority and just have a chat. Mm. You know, because they are there for you if he's getting harassing you or something. Speak to somebody and get the lay of the land, you know. Don't put your life on hold for that person. Move forward with your new man and be happy. I like this one. I work with idiots who are getting under my skin, but I can't hold my tongue. What should I do? <laughs> Just carry on saying what you want to say. Freedom of speech. Don't let them uh, get you down. That's a very sensible way of responding, Mother. All right. <laughs> I have a 10-week-old baby, so what's your biggest advice when it comes to newborn babies? Where do you live? How come I babysit? <laughs> oh, 10-week-old? Yeah. Oh, I, I would say, again, plenty of cuddles, affection, because before you know it, 
They were mooching along, going, and they will grow away. But plenty of affection. How would you deal with toxic family members, the ones that bring drama and chaos to your quiet life? Cut them out. <laughs> I know this from experience, viewers. Cut them out. Life goes on. I, I have my family I need. I have family I don't need. But the family I do need, they will see this and they know that they're very loved. <laughs> because, I'm going to tell you, viewers, when I get the win... <laughs> No, Shannon's laughing on the floor. When I get the win, I have a little notebook and I have all my people. Shannon's first, then it's Dada, and then it's all my family members closely and my friends that mean something to me, and then I'm at the bottom. But that suits me. And also, where we live, we have a Tesco. I'm going to wash that down and I'm going to have it made into a travel lodge for the uh, people on the sleep on the street for service people so they can have 24 hour bedding food care and eat that's what i would like you're going to be changing the beds i know i'm going to be i'm going to be in with it shan all right i want to be because it's going to be called something wing and after me <laughs> i want to be involved in that to, to show people there is kind people about i would love wing. i would love that i tell we only win, uh, we only need to one win one meal. You one can, meal? <laughs> no, you can have half. Or maybe if we had multiple minions, that would be better. I could do... I can't even win 52 grand on Magic Money. No, no, no. That's why your phone bill's high. <laughs> right, one of my lovely says, I'm really missing my mum. I lost her when I was 13 and I'm getting married in May. I'm trying not to think that I will miss her so much because she isn't on the pictures and I'm worried that I will hate the pictures and be jealous because my mother-in-law's in them and not my mum. No, no, no. You, your mum will be there on that day, darling. You, I think you will feel your mum. If you don't feel her, you will know your mum's there. It's going to be a sad day, but you need to think what would mum want you to be, sad on that day or happy. And I think like with my mum, if I met someone now and I got married, she'd just say, be happy. You know, I wish you all the... What is Mama G going to miss most about you when you move back? And what would she be cooking for herself? Uh, well, I have my... Uh, the most I'm going to miss with Shannon when she goes is just the banter. Because we do have a good laugh here. And... I already have my list, what I'll be cooking, and I won't be cooking. <laughs> it's going to be a short list, bread, corned beef, tomatoes, oh, snacks, snacks, snacks. I saw on our town page that the chicken shop's opening in a couple of months. Yes, yes. You're happy about that? <laughs> yes, yes, because I actually saw the owners when I was walking past the other day. They oh, was that's like, good. <laughs> oh, I said, they introduced me, I saw the man. This is, our best, wasting away. this is our best customer. I said, yes, I had six chins. I've now got three. A couple of months, I think it says they're going to be open. Oh, right, right. Uh, has Mama G thought about doing her own YouTube channel? No, I'm not doing that, no. <laughs> I'm all right all the time Shannon's here with me, but when she leaves... We need to try and get her out to work a camera. Someone said that you could do like a vlog and in the bottom I could have like Mama G cam. So What's that? So that we know when you're recording... Mama G cam. You know yeah, when it's like what child it? trotters about it for you with your little camera. <laughs> what when I'm out of the shops and everything? <laughs> oh no. People be like, who's that? You'd be going doing your Tesco shop getting uh, spotted. No, but you know if I had like a modern phone, yeah. I, I would be able to go to the stores and just say, Oh, this is for the larger woman. But you have to ask permission, don't you? Well, I think so. I need to look into it because a lot of people yeah. are saying that you don't have to, which no, I, but, know, I just get worried that they're going to chuck me out. <laughs> no, but but also I've been approached by a couple of people who know you, haven't it? Oh, uh, let's have a look. Hi, I hope you're both doing well. I need your advice regarding my husband's friend. He's always calling and messaging, which doesn't bother me. But lately since November, he messages my husband past 10 a.m. or sometimes 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. My husband, however, doesn't always respond back, but it's really starting to bother and affect me as I don't understand why he's messaging so late. I told my husband not to message or call past 10 unless it's an emergency, and he hasn't said anything, but now I'm at the point where I feel like I'm going to say it myself. 
I don't want to sound dramatic, but my husband's brother or his other friends don't do this, and now I feel paranoid. Once my husband didn't go to see a film with him, and he was messaging my husband saying, you did the dirty on me, and it's not good. So are you thinking that there's you're reading more to it than what you think? Than what I think you're reading more into it, but it's little tweaks and that that's making you think that, isn't it? The friend sounds very needy. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I would be the same. I would say yeah. nine, 9 o'clock, that is our time. You stop calling. Or maybe have the friend to your house and just try and uh, have a chat and find out what's going on, eh? If you want to. Especially if you've got work. That's yeah, late yeah, to be yeah. calling that. He might not have any more friends, but that you need to sort of, you yeah. and your husband's marriage. Let's have a look. Hello, Happy New Year. My main worry this year is that my son cannot seem to get out of the dreaded lockdown or the C word out of his head. His nerves were shocked to the core and he continually stresses about sanitising the children, which is now beginning to affect his private life. Myself and his dad try to reassure him daily, and so does his partner, but I worry this will cause a rift in the relationship. I feel better writing this down as it's caused me to have anxiety, and he'd be devastated if anything happened to his family and I. People who don't suffer with their nerves are lucky, however it's only been in their shoes when you know how they feel. My heart breaks for him and will always be there, but any tips on trying to get out of the dreaded lockdown? I feel lockdown did affect a lot of people and it still I, is affecting. I, I was just say a lot of the children don't want to go to school because of the lockdown thing, but it's sort of like, are there, is on the TV and that, are they making too much of this thing still, that COVID's here and people are thinking like us, oh, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And oh, it is when you've got children, you want to protect your children and sort of all this business with your hand wash. I'm not so much hand wash, but I'm anti vac isn't it? Back, yeah, 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 because m my my hands are shot to bit viewers, but that's because I'm always, you know, but... It, I do it, think lockdown did affect a lot of people, and it still is. I don't think there's the counselling out there for people. No, and also, if, you, if you've got children, and that lady said you, it's, she's trying to say, don't worry too much, but mm. is he thinking, well, I have a family and I need to protect my family, you know? I think the government did scaremonger. A lot of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't have our jabs and we was all right. Let's have a look. Good luck, Mama G. Love Lady in Red. You know who Lady in Red is? Yeah, <laughs> that lady. I love her too. Loads of love, Mama G. I am an OG and don't like what the trolls have to say. In the past, it's got me in trouble. So should I kill them with kindness, put them right, or not give them the time of day? Not give them the time of day. <laughs> we, we had a problem like this with some person. And we had a thing, and I just said, I don't care what you do to me. I don't wash my hair enough. I'm fat. I'm blah, blah. <laughs> Who cares? But you don't say that to my daughter. Because if you was brave enough. Oh, no, I can't say that again. No, no, because she, it's not nice. It's not nice. I just thought uh, celebrities, when it got trolled. <laughs> I said to Shan, I just thought celebrities, but... It was trolling and trolling of you, the viewer I'm talking to, but it was just damn right rudeness and, you know, not very nice. Let's have a look. Hi, Shannon. Mum passed away on 3rd of January 2024, so is there any advice from Mama G on helping with grief and healing process? Just think your mum's there. Takes uh, time. Yeah, but talk, talk about mum. Don't sort of think... It's in the background. Talk about mum all the time. We do, don't we, about Nan? Yeah. I have my mum. I have my real dad. I have my stepdad. We have aunties. And because our family is a very funny family, and we, if we remember a thing, we, I will say to Shan, did you remember when Nan or did you remember auntie and that? And we have a chuckle to ourselves. But laughter is the best thing, remembering your loved ones happy and doing things with them. Indeed, indeed. Hi, Mama G. I wanted to ask how you stay so calm in bad situations and manage to solve problems with everything. You're a great mother and Shannon is lucky to have you as her mum. I've been a single parent for 58 years, so four kids, two boys and two girls, oh. all grown up now and got their own kids, but we still worry about them. It's what the mums do. Uh, yeah. I just need a bit of advice on keeping calm and learning to de-stress and cope through the days. 
Love you and Shannon loads to keep up the vlogs and keep smiling as you make my day and remind me of myself always helping others is a good kind heart and full of smiles. So what is your advice for staying calm in bad situations and solving problems? I just think if there is a bad situation, try and sort of ride out the storm. But if, if it's some a personal thing, just let it go to a certain bit and then you if it's getting too much, just go take the bullet, bite the bullet and say to the person, right, what is the problem? If you can. Mm. You know? And get it out in the open and sort it out verbally. Hi, sweetheart. Nothing to like to say or ask, but just wanted to say Happy New Year to Shannon, Mama G and Dan. I really hope 2024 is full of happiness and excitement and looking forward to watching all the new vlogs and seeing what the future holds. Keep smiling. Lots of love and hugs. Thank you. Well, that's no different to me because I haven't got a passport deal, so I won't be whizzing <laughs> off anywhere. You whiz off on your uh, bus pass into London. Oh, yes, yes. We have some very good uh, jaunts next year, viewers. This year? You have to remember we're in a new year, isn't oh, we? Oh, yes, this year, viewers, yes. Uh, hi, Shannon and Mama G. Mama G, can you help with this, please? Although my daughter's partner is nice, they live completely separate lives. She struggled with this at first and it caused the friction between them both. However, she seems to have accepted this and has made a life of her own with her friends, but they hardly spend any time together despite actually living together. What do I Ooh. do? As I don't want to interfere, but I'm worried it will impact the relationship in the long run and my daughter's happiness is my first priority. Oh, they live together. So they live together, but in essence, it's almost separate, separate people. Lives. Perhaps they need to do a hobby or something together, little steps, and then if they start getting on, do another hobby they think they like instead of him doing his things and her doing her things, isn't it? A compromise, something. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good to have separate interests and stuff. Yeah, but you yeah, still, but you to still need to do together, isn't it? Yeah. So say if he liked golf and you liked tennis... You could maybe go to a crazy golf thing one day and just say, oh, I'll come and give it a go and see how I'll go. And he could go to badminton one day or something, you know? Mm. I don't know. Compromise. Yeah. Let's have a look. Count me in, please. Hi, Mama G. Where do I start? I'm 51 and I've got five grandchildren that I'm not allowed to see as their mums don't like me. It's purely because oh. I speak my mind and they don't like it. I get along with everyone and have never been bad. And I get told from some of my true friends that my sons have been telling people I'm a bad mother. And that my partner is always moaning at me for no reason. I lost my dad in 2006 and my mum in 2021. So I'm really missing them as I've got people around me. But it's not the same as having mum and dad um. around. If you want to talk or tell them something. I have anxiety and depression and I overthink a lot. But I am a white witch so I try to see the good in all people. Oh, but I good. can read them in a book. Where I'm a bigger lady, I just say my self-confidence is the bad side, as I have a big belly and I can't use diet powders anymore because I'm a diabetic. So this lady is asking for help on... I I think it's more her body persona, how she sees uh, of herself. herself, yeah. And obviously she's not allowed to see her grandchildren and well, her children are telling lies. Yeah. But the beauty is the eye of the beholder. So whatever side you are, whether I mean, look at me. I don't care. I will do whatever. But if you, people look, they look. If they don't, then. but beauty is, and maybe uh, get a, a crystal, Shane. Mm. You know, because I think because the lady's a white witch. Yeah. Get a crystal, like a not a healing crystal, that but one that you can put in your hand, and makes you feel like. Obviously, the lady feels like that, but it make you feel outgoing, you mm. know? But I wouldn't worry about people putting you down. You know you're a good person. So, and it's sad about your children making you, the, the other children. I'd front the mothers up. Yeah, yeah. So, she's obviously got sons that have got wives, isn't it? Mm. Oh, do you? See, it all gets very complicated with kids. Yeah. It's like, she says she's never done anything bad. It's just because no. she speaks her mind. So, obviously, if the child's in your house and they're spitting and you say something, they go back to their mum or dad and then that's why they say, so there's no rules and regulations, is there? Maybe. Yeah. Let's have a look. Hello, Mama G. Since a small child, I was always told I was worthless, unwanted or stupid. I tried my hardest to be accepted and loved, but I never stood up for myself as we was taught not to. 
We accepted verbal and physical abuse until we grew into oh. adults. However, three years ago, I found the strength to walk away from my family. I have a wonderful husband, children, grandchildren, and my sister who are still in my life. My question is, how do I rebuild a self-worth and confidence? As most days, I feel the guilt for not standing up to the bullies and protecting the younger me. I have PTSD of where sometimes I see a lot that was hidden in my mind whilst dreaming and scared what people think of me. So oh. how do you kind of I, I, I think ap apologise to your younger self? No, I, I think it would be all right for that lady to... It sounds a bit funny, but to speak to a third party how she feels. Mm -hmm. And once she feels and gets that off her chest that she's not a bad person, you know, to think of... But obviously, if her family have been, there's no way going back, is it? It's very hard. Like, congrats for walking away. Yeah, You're only yeah. your immediate bit of... Immediate family, needs. yeah, yeah. But she's got her family that she needs, like, I've got mine that I need. Mm. I don't need bad people who have, or people who've been horrible to my mum. Maybe doing something that you wanted to try when you was younger. Now. But was scared to do, maybe yeah. that's a way of relating to your younger self. Or just say she wanted to go on a girl's holiday or maybe wanted to do a bungee jump or something like that. Just yeah. example, do it because you now. Let's have a look. Right. So this one, this is the one we're going to end on. This is the oh. last one. Look, we've had quite a few. Let me just quickly pause this. You come in the last one. <laughs> oh, right. Is the thing run it? No, no, I'm one minute. Seven or on. Right. Hey, Sharon, Mama G. Hope you both and Dana will. Where to start? This is going to be a long one. And oh. I just really need to offload as I feel I'm falling apart. And who knows, Mama G may be able to offer some advice and support. Right. For the last year, my daughter, who will be 13 at the end of the month, has been the victim of bullying at school. My daughter is naturally very quiet and shy, but she is years ahead of other kids her age maturity-wise. She's more into reading, music, playing her guitar, where other kids at her school are making themselves look older than they are regarding who's more popular, lads, vaping and smoking. So obviously there is a very noticeable difference. And she has been pushed aside and ignored and made fun of this difference. There have been violent threats made to her, belittling and attacking her appearance. And she even had food rubbed in her face and hair by one girl. And there has been many occasions where we've had to involve the police. The school has been completely and utterly useless. And every school day I get a text from my daughter asking me to ring the school and ask if she can come home. She has no trust in any of the teachers and neither do myself or my husband. She struggles to make friendships and if she does, she can't maintain the friendships as she's very socially awkward and feels uncomfortable around people. All of this has caused her severe anxiety and depression, but last week she had an appointment with a children's mental health team to open up for the first time. And she told myself and the therapist about, I'm going to put hurt in self, but hasn't thought of how to do. Obviously, you can imagine it has left me and her dad heartbroken with a thousand different emotions of what we have to try and deal with, but not to show our daughter and protect her. She has eight therapy sessions to attend, and because of some of her traits and behaviours, she has been put on an 18-month wait list to be assessed for autism. The therapy sessions are arranged by school, which means I have to chase the school up daily to make sure she's getting the support and that she feels safe. This has, in the long run, caused friction between me and my husband and we're snapping at each other because we're both stressed, frustrated and obviously de devastated but while our daughter being our number one priority is hard. Mm -hmm. No amount of comfort, talking, support or anything from us seems to help her and we feel useless and out of our death. Sorry for the massive rant, I need you to talk. Thank you and love you lots. So no. I read this and no. I tried to put myself... No, but I'm listening and I'm thinking, get them sessions done and speak to someone as your school is not very uh helpful they sound crap no yeah well you've just said i couldn't say that <laughs> you say crap yeah, oh then you, that school isn't worth uh whatever 10 pence you need to go to the local education authority tell them what's been going on with your little and get her homeschooled because mm -hmm. i have lots of friends in my area and try and get her diagnosed with, uh, what's it, autism. 18 month wait. Yes, yeah. yeah. Push, push to get her diagnosed because I have friends with children. It has been a long process, 
but they've been diagnosed and nine out of ten now them friends uh, my friends now are having their children home tutored and it's like a weight gets lifted off of your head so please persevere and let Shannon know I think it's ridiculous that you it's have such to chase a long the way, school. And it, yeah, that's what I mean. The school is nothing. Mm. If they go to the right department, Shane, and say that that school isn't giving that girl the education and the protection and blah, blah, and for her own protection, she needs to be homeschooled, that little girl, LG13, mm. she will start to feel better in herself. Her anxiety might ease. I speak you know? to like local councillors and MPs yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like or, e or even get it in like your local newspaper that the school yeah. is not. Yeah. Oh. I mean, she sounds a bit like me into reading and yeah, playing yeah. instruments and music. Yeah. And unfortunately. But you wasn't bullied, was you? Well, you get sometimes get called geeky and all that, but I think. But you've never had something squashed in your face. No, because I've been around Because to be honest, uh, viewer, if somebody had squashed something in my daughter's face, you know what I'm like with Shane. But I think. It's sad that kids who are above their years, in essence, get ostracised because, as she says, they're not worrying about, oh, smoking and vaping to no, try no. and call. They're actually educated and yeah. want to try and make a difference. There, there's not many people, Shannon, the children now are like that because they're frightened to be like that because yeah. you get the click of people, don't you? You've got to smoke. You've got to wear the nice clothes. You've got to do... But you might not be brainy like your child, so... I think education is far better than what you look like. Yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes, like, you see it now. Vaping wasn't a thing when I was at school. We no. were smoking. But now, you've got kids 12 years old coming out with vapes. And I'm like, what on earth? So, so with this vaping thing, then, if you was, like, going to school with, like, your fluffy coat and your skirt rolled over, you wouldn't be going out the door like that. And if no. I caught you with a vape, I'd make you smoke the vape altogether, <laughs> like someone did in my family. But also, I think if there's been occasions where you've had to involve the police, the police should be keeping record of this. Yeah, and they should and they should be going to that person who squashed that thing in her face and say to their mum, because sometimes the parents have no idea that their children, like parents, we say, oh, they won't do that. Though. When you leave for school and you get with your mates, the parents sometimes would say, not my, not my son, not my daughter. But yes, it's once they've left mm. the home, isn't it? Peer pressure. I would definitely chase out with the police as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And get it all logged to get reference numbers and And I, I would definitely, once the counselling starts again, I would definitely say, the school's doing nothing. I want her home tutored. How do I get her home tutored? Mm. And keep on about the diagnostic. I can't believe it's that long to get diagnosed. It is. That's silly. But well, I, I know a friend, viewers, she's been waiting a year to get her child diagnosed with ADHD a year. That's where the money needs it, to go it, is, into the is NHS sort of, for the diagnosis. Yeah, but is that obviously di NHS as well? I would assume so. This is a waiting list. But yeah. I don't know if you can get assessed privately, but again, it's just finances and it's everything yeah, to pay yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the side of friction between you and your husband, I would just say maybe be patient with one another. Yeah, yeah. Because it is a testing... And if you've only got time. one child, obviously you said your child is your main concern. But it might be that the dad feels like the mum's pushing him out. Like she's maybe trying to do versa. everything Yeah, that for could, the child, isn't it? That could probably be seen on both yeah. sides. And maybe there might be different ways... That they would deal they with deal it with together. It. Yeah, yeah. Because when I read that, I thought, if that was me, so this is why I don't feel I'd be having kids, because I probably wouldn't be walking the streets. Yeah. But if that was me, I would wait for that parent outside the school. What, with the one who put her face in it? And yeah. I'd confront it up. Yeah, I yeah. Like, I wouldn't think like... But that's what I'm saying. Maybe the parent doesn't know, Shane, mm. that the girl, obviously it is a girl, has done that, because when they leave home and they're, they're at, school, at home... Oh, butter wouldn't melt. Mm. It's peer pressure again, isn't it? Look what happens when people get stabbed. People, they stand there and video it. Yeah. You know, instead of trying to help the person, isn't it? It's the culture now, isn't it? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. But that, my love, is. Keep us updated with that one as well. Yeah, yeah, let us know. Because, as I say, let Shane know about 
if you get the diagnostic and if you start getting lit then tutored indoors it's it's a good thing any follow-ups yeah yeah but guys that is um if i get any what? numbers oh sorry i'm buttoning in again if i get any numbers from friends i'll give them to shame through organizations oh, you can go i can email yeah them yeah to the yeah i will help you if i can this is uh the end of the first moments with mama g guys oh i've been uh, perched behind the camera with the uh, radiator but uh, how do you think you got on as an agony aunt? Uh, not too bad. I was getting a little bit confused or whatever. But as I say, don't take anything as gospel. I'm just saying the way I feel in myself. Your view. Yeah. Um, because even now, viewers, I'm going to say something Shan will know I'm going to say. <laughs> even now, when Shannon leaves, if things occur where she's living, then I will get on the train and I will move jump and I will find out and... All, all the time I've got a breath. That's mm. what you do for your children, isn't it? I'd do it if I had a son, I think. Well, I know I'd do it, wouldn't I? <laughs> but with a boy, it wouldn't be so bad, probably, maybe. I'd if, probably be worse than the boy. No, but I'm thinking maybe with a girl you're more protective, aren't you? But there again. The, I wouldn't the boy, say I'm a girl that needs protection. No, no, but maybe <laughs> the boy would be into sort of physical stuff, like boxing and things like, you know? And he would say, Mum, I can look after myself. Well, I can look after myself. Yeah, I know you can. Karate. Yeah, I know you can, yeah. <laughs> I got treated like a boy on the growing up with uh, martial arts. Yeah. But, uh, yes, that is all done. So, as I say, thank you to everyone who sent them in. And it is a very, very v varied variety. And, as I say, should we put, like, a little backdrop on mum she can have an agony art we're gonna have a cup of tea next time <laughs> i wonder what top she's gonna have next time we need to get you some motif tops oh, if I'm bit out, of I'll van gogh one. you can wear your van oh, gogh oh, yeah, one I've got, I've got a nice van gogh not that bob marley not that blue one i can wear bob oh. not the blue one that's too small on one of the last videos they called you mama marley because you had your Bob Marley top on. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. But guys, if you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe down below. And leave us a comment as I say, what do you think? How do you think mum done? Would you give yourself a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Well, at the minute, uh, she's in the feel, middle. <laughs> I do feel very confident, but hey ho. Because this is your first one on your own. I know. <laughs> this little screen is just you. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I don't want people... Yeah. I, when I go shopping now... I don't want people seeing that, and I'm going to be, hello, hello. Oh, oh. <laughs> what if somebody comes along and says, would you sign this? <laughs> what do I do? Or like, you know when you see celebrities, would you mind if I had a picture? I'll say, oh, <laughs> all these business, you know. She's going to have her own little series on no, it, guys. No. But take care, stay safe as always, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>